Hi quilters, it's Marianne Fontana and I'm starting to work on a new project and I'm going to use the new AccuQuilt Starry Path die and that's a block on board. Um, it is model number 55197 uh, and I've actually selected uh, a teal and a midnight blue and a stripe. Um, and I've cut the fabric out and we're going to look at it in a moment and I hope you'll join me as I sew this and by the way I'm sewing a second block because I'm making a combination quilt using the starry path and another block on board. You'll have to stay tuned to see which one that is. Okay, so here we go. Okay, uh, always make a test block first uh, before you uh, go ahead and cut out all your good fabric because if you don't like the way it looks, you'll be really happy you didn't cut out the rest of it. Um, okay, so this is Starry Path. And as I said, I used a dark blue, a teal, and a stripe. Now what I found out is when I laid the fabric down according to the direction to the dye, it made the stripe go this way and then that way. It just was kind of funky the way it lays out on the dye. So anyway, I looked at that and I said, okay, I get the idea of where it is and I know I have to turn that. But let me see if I like any other variations. Maybe I'll just do two colors. So then I said, all right, I'm just going to do the stripe. Okay, now I did correct. If you notice, the stripe looks like it's going this way, and I'll show you on the die how I laid it down. And I put it with the teal, and I went, yeah, that looks okay, but it just doesn't really, I don't know, just doesn't jump out at me. So I did one more version to see if I liked it, and I did this one, and I said, you know, I kind of like that. I like the four stripes, and I like the dark blue, and I like that. And what's more, when I laid it out in a quilt with my alternate block, uh, which we'll talk about later, I liked the flow. So this is what I've chosen. So I'm going to do part of the stripe, in this, uh, part of the, uh, the star in the stripe, part in the dark blue in the background is all going to be teal. So I've laid it out on my die board, um, and I want to show you how it's laid out. Okay, uh, this is shape A, uh, which let's look at it according to the... Um, here, let me lay this out this way. I'm going to pull this down and pull this here so you can see it, if you can see it all. And so anyway, this is my uh, shape A, uh, which is here, uh, and I've cut enough. And this is shape C, which is actually going to be this piece, which is my background. So A and C are my background. And then the sharp, pointy part of the star is D. And so those are going to be my stripes, and I've decided the blue is going to be the other half, which is this piece here. Now, if you note, uh, on the die board, they place these fairly close together because they assume you're going to want to cut the entire piece. Uh, and I've decided not to. So what I did is I drew a little line, and I like to mark my dies with the sizes. I drew a little line, and it actually, you can't probably read it, but it says blade. So that when I laid my blue pieces down, I kind of knew where the blade was, and I didn't have to keep picking up the die and looking at it. And same when I did the stripe. Now, when you put your fabric on, right sides must be face up at all times. So you've actually got to cut the pieces and stack them all, or you're going to get a left and a right, and you're going to have to make two different blocks. One going left and one going right. So anyway, I've cut all my pieces out and uh, I've predetermined. And I'm actually going to be making eight blocks uh, in the design as you see here. Now this actually is the same fabric, but it does track differently depending on where you cut it. So some of the stars are going to look different than others. So I thought that looked kind of cool anyway. Okay, so we're going to start sewing now. I just wanted to give you an idea of what my workstation looks like. This is actually my sewing machine over here. And I have the instructions for how to assemble the die sitting here next to me because I am the type of person as the minute I look away, I do it wrong. So I like to continue to refer back to the directions just because it's safer for me that way. Um, and I know it sounds silly, but my mind wanders and this fabric moves around sometimes and I'm not always paying attention. Uh, and I usually like to keep the finished piece here. And then these are, if you can't see it, I have my die board right down here uh, to my left side. 
um, and I'm going to start sewing. So the first thing I do is I'm going to look at the directions and it says sew A to B. So I'm going to look and this is my B. So I'm going to take these pieces and down on the die board this is my A. And so I'm going to move the die and I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to compare it. And I'm going to say okay I have to sew it so they look like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this one over because this is the way you sew. And if I stack them this way, I'm less likely to sew them wrong. So off I go to my sewing machine. So now I'm going to sew the A and the B pieces together, which are the ones I just took off the die board. And they have to be right sides together. So I have one face up and one face down. And I will sew my first block, my first block, my first two pieces together. And I want to check to make sure it is correct. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna say, okay, does it look like the, the picture? And the answer is yes, it does. So I'm good to go. So as long as I sew everything exactly the same way, uh, I'll be fine. So I'm gonna place the next ones together and I like to string piece everything. Um, it's faster, uh, it uh, saves thread, and it just, um, it's just easier also to iron them, and I keep them all together so I don't lose pieces, they don't fall on the floor. So I'm making eight total blocks uh, of the um, Starry Path, and so I'm going to need four of these assemblies for each of the blocks, so that means I need a total of 32. 32 of these. So I'm going to continue sewing them and um, then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I've sewn the uh, A and B units together and now the directions are telling me to add C. And if you look down here, right here, I have my A and B unit and I have to sew C to it. A and B is what I have and if I just slant them it looks like that. And then I'm going to sew, let's just move this over a little bit. I'm going to sew C here. Okay, so then it's going to look like the picture. And what, in order to do that, I will flip this and line up the two pieces and sew it together. Okay, so let's do that on the sewing machine. Sew the first one now. I had a command come on and told me that my bobbin thread was out, but it was because I left the door open. So anyway, so let me look and let's see. So yeah, that's what I want it to look like. There we go. I've got the three pieces. That looks perfect. Okay, so I'm going to sew the rest of say, shape C to A and B units. So let's just fold it back. I do like to try to keep them together if I can. And I will take another A, B unit. I will finger press it open to the dark side. And I will take the triangle unit. Oops, make sure they're right sides together. And of course, all your fabric should have been cut face up because it isn't, it will not fit together properly. All right, let's do that one more time. Get another one. I'm going to open it, finger press it. I find the finger pressing, if you give it a good, you know, push with your nail or your finger, um, really lays the fabric down and saves a lot of back and forth on the iron. <clears throat> okay, we'll do one more. Now I do have um, 32 of these to sew together because I did make 32 of the AB combo and I have 32 pieces of the C, so I will sew those together. Alright, this is the ABC unit, and I'm actually going to just finger press this down, just like that with my nail. Um, and that's the ABC unit. Okay, A, B, and C. And if you can see, now all I have left to put on is D. And D will go right here, as you can see in the picture. So what I do is I'm going to just turn it over. And I always like to sew with the seams 
face up so I can make sure they go and they lay flat. So then I'm going to turn this over and this is the way I'm going to sew it. So the piece is actually right underneath it. All right, so this piece matches up. Here, we'll show it to you this way. Okay? So that when you open it, it will lay just the way that does. Okay, so let's flip it back over. And as I said, I like to put the seams right side up because I want to make sure that these don't get bunchy or weird when I start sewing and that this one lays down in the direction that I finger pressed it. All right, I have the, tri the striped piece down below and this is just the way we laid it out. So I have to make sure that corner is right in that corner, right there. And I'm gonna just go down and see that the piece matches up here so that looks just perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna gently put it in and I always like to put my presser foot on top of the fabric. And then I sew into the seam line, make sure this is lined up and then go. And just to make sure, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to check it just to make sure and I do have the angle that I want, okay? So that is what we're striving for. So now I'm going to go ahead and sew the rest. And now actually, I'm sewn together. All I have to do is sew the four pieces together and the block is complete. <laughs> Isn't that easy? Yeah, it goes together really quick. There's only four pieces to this block. Um, and so it's a really quick and simple uh, block to do. It looks really complicated. There are no strange seams. There's no Y seams. There's no fancy matching. They're all straight sewing. And as you see here, this is as easy as it gets. All right, so that was two. And I just have, let's get another one here. I'll do one more for you. I'm going to press my the finger press my seam open, flip it over, match my corner up right there, make sure it matches down, put it in my path of my pr foot. I like to stop, recheck it, off I go. Okay, so that was three. Uh, I have 32, 29 to go. All right, so now I have all um, the uh, four pieces sewn together in a unit, um, and this is where we left off. So I'm going to finger press towards the last piece I added, which is that striped piece. And I'm going to go ahead and first do four. I want to make sure the pattern works and that my pieces fit together. So I'll go ahead and finger press four pieces, and I will lay them down as I go. It goes this way and then the last one all right so my pattern proves itself all right that's the way it should look let's let's just move it over a little bit let me move it here and we'll put the piece I've sewn together my sample block which is what I've been working from and if you look it's uh, pretty much the same so I'm good to go. Obviously there's a little shading difference, as I said, because different pieces of the fabric. This is much wider too, this piece, and this is narrow, but I don't mind. I think it adds interest. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to put them together randomly. Now I'm going to make, I have one block, and I actually need eight in total, uh, but I don't count this. I like to keep sample blocks. So I'm going to leave that aside, and I'm going to make eight of these. So I'm going to stack eight <clears throat> quarter, you know, quarters, because there's four per block. So what do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'm going to go ahead and go around and do the same thing. I finger pressed a few of these ahead of time just for ease. One, two, oh, there's three there because there was one already there. Three, this is four. And then I'll just go ahead and take my pieces. Now, just as a um, hint, you know, whatever piece is on the top when you fold it over will be where you're pressing your seams towards. So in this case, as I said, I'm pressing it towards the stripe. There it is. 
So this is five, and I'll go ahead and I'll make eight here, eight here, eight here, and then I'm going to be ready to go ahead and sew. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over and sew these pieces together. Then I'm going to sew those pieces together. All right, I'm sewing two of the quarters together now, and I've lined them up uh, the same way that I've just shown you by flipping the one over. Uh, but let me just sew this one, and I will show you again. Okay, so uh, these have to be uh, face. The stripe is this way. Okay, that's the striped piece. So that, as you can see, is one quarter. And they're laying, and I have the stack of eight. And then I have another stack over here, which I've faced down so that they'll both be facing right sides together. And the stripe is going vertical. This is horizontal, this is vertical, and when you lay them down, they're opposite. Okay, but I leave them over here because I'll grab one at a time, and I always like to keep them face down. It's less likely that I'll misplace them when I match them up. So I'm going to take one piece and one piece, and I'm going to line the corners up. Just so. My two corners are lined up, you can see. All right, evenly, and one goes one way, one goes the other. And I'm just going to start it in the machine. It took like three stitches. And then I'm going to take this side here and make sure it's lined up and hold on to it. And then I'm going to go down at the bottom where the two pieces are. And let me just, I, you know, this should be good. Make sure you finger press that corner well so that the seam lays flat. And then you're going to just match up the two pieces. Can you see? There's the underside. And there's the top, and they're just perfectly matched up. And I'm going to just hold on to them with my finger, just like this at the point. And not, I don't want to stretch anything. I just want to gently pull it so that the seam is straight here. And then I'm going to make sure this is lined up. And I'm going to hold it in place. I'm also going to make sure the seam stays down. There's a long seam here, and I don't want this to flip here when I sew it, so I will actually hold it down to make sure it goes under the foot pedal correctly. All right, so let's do another one. This is horizontal. This is vertical. I'm going to just put these to the side and just take one. So I'm laying it down. Then I'm laying this with the stripe going in the other direction right sides together, start it. Okay, let's go down to the point, and I'm going to pick up the two pieces. And at this point, if you feel that seam is not real good, you could go ahead and give it another little finger press. And then I'm going to match the points up, just like that. Can you see it, right? In here. And there's the seam under there. You see the seam? So I want to make sure that's flat. And I'm going to just lay it down and hold it, make sure this matches up, and that the seam is straight here, and so. So I have eight sides to put, put together. I actually have 16 sides because I started out with 32 pieces, um, and now I have 32 quarters. And since I'm making eight blocks and I need four for each, four times eight is 32. So I'm going to sew um, eight of these together in this manner. And then I'm going to go get the other pairs, which are for the other half of the block, and sew those together. All right, so I've done the first uh, half of the blocks. I did eight, sewed eight together on each side. Now I'm going to sew the other eight. Um, and this is actually the top of the block. Um, which, let's see if we can hold these up for you so you can see them. They go this way. You know, one stripe goes down, one goes up. So if I lay them this way, it looks like I'm going to have to sew from the point to the wide side. And I really don't want to start at the point. It makes it more difficult. So I'm going to turn them around completely and just flip their order. And now I can start at the blunt side. But what's interesting, if you notice, these are now horizontal. And so are the others that we just sewed together. So actually, you're sewing another eight together identically as you did the last eight. And I just do that because... Um, I wanted you to realize they're a mirror image of each other. And all I did was turn them upside down. So I've turned them this way, you know, where the uh, 
bottoms of there and before I had it in the, in the other direction. But it's really just the same sew. They're just mirror images of each other. So I'm going to set this to the side. I'm going to lay one down. I'm going to put the other one in the corner just like I did before. Put it under my foot pedal. Start a few stitches. Uh, make sure the corner, the ends of the other side are lined up together. Um, just like that. Hold them straight. And so, make sure this is good. Yeah, am I good there? I'm perfect. Okay. I do want to make sure this seam sews in flat at the bottom. So I'm good. So now I have seven more to go. And then we can assemble the final block. All right, so I've sewn the two halves together. And I'm just going to open them up. And again, I'm still finger pressing. I haven't gone to the ironing board yet. I will. I'll really work on this block and press it down really well once I'm done. But I'm going to lay out one this way. And I just have eight on either side. And I'm always going to finger press it um, to this long piece because when I place the two together, this is going this way and that is going that way. And that's what I want to have when I sew these last two blocks together because I want those points to kiss. And you remember the kiss method, right? Keep it simple and smile. So here we go. I'm going to flip it over. And this seam is going this way. And this seam is going that way. Now, can you see this? This is going that way. And this is going the other way. And that's the way I'm going to sew them together. I've matched up the two pieces as I've shown you. Going in opposite directions, my seams. This goes this way. This goes this way, and that will give me a perfect point in the middle. And I'm going to hold that and extend to the end. Go around. I just did that so I get it on the other side of the machine, and I'm going to sew, but I'm going to keep my finger where this point is, those two seams meet, because I want that to be perfect. So I'm going to hold on to that for dear life, and I'm not going to let that move. And I'm going to sew. Now, when you're sewing this, you have no choice but to start at a point, okay? And what I will always do is put the fabric underneath my presser foot first so it doesn't get chewed up in the beginning. Making sure my seam is still good here. I can always adjust if I need to a little. I'm sewing to that seam and stopping, and then I'm going to... Pull the next, the last two pieces in the back, the two points to make sure that they're together. Just the same way I was doing it when I was sewing them together. It's the same method. Then I want to make sure my seam at the end lays flat. Uh, so let's just uh, cut this thread. Now normally I'd strip them all together, but I want you to see. Okay, so let's get it open, and there we go. In fact, let me pull us up a little. Hello, hello, here I am, and look. Okay, perfect. And now I will go, and I will give that a very, very heavy press. So I will do the uh, remaining seven, um, and then I will show you what the second block is that I am using for this quilt. So that's going to be the big reveal. Okay, so the blocks are done, the eight blocks. Uh, here we go. Uh, I think it looks really good. I like the color combinations. I think because it blends in the stripes have both the colors in it. So it kind of, you know, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, and I just wanted to show you the back, how I um, sewed it together. Now I ended up pressing it at the end uh, after I sewed the four pieces together. And the first thing I did when the block was folded in half, let me get it in half, it was this way, was I clipped the little pieces that stuck up uh, on uh, the center part there where the two seams met. And that allowed me to swirl the seams. Uh, and if you look, it looks like a little square in the middle. And what that did is allowed me, when I clipped those curves, the seams naturally fell. That's the four main seams that I just sewed together. One, two, three, four. Don't forget, this is halfway. So when I sewed the four parts together and now they swirl around in a circle and you get that little square right in the middle 
And what it does is allows that block to lay perfectly flat and you have no bulk uh, at all in that centerpiece. It's super flat and it's going to be very, very easy to quilt over. Okay, so that is the finish uh, of our block. That's the starry path. And as I told you, we're going to be doing an alternate block as well to go with this one, or at least I'm making an alternate. And here it is. These are the two blocks sewn together. And there's your starry path. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are the eight um, that we just sewed. And then the remaining eight, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What do you think those are? They're cross canoes. Yep. And all I did is sew one half one color and the other half the other background. I mixed the background so I get this cross effect, which I really think is cool. Now, I used a light. Uh, border on it but interestingly enough if you use the dark border instead it actually I think changes um, the look of the quilt a little bit it makes it more circular like a diamond as opposed to I think this one looks more like a cross I don't know that's just me but anyway this is the way I make it again. so now we have to make eight cross canoes uh, and let me show you the piece for that and this is what our cross canoe is going to look like Okay, so when I lay it on the die, I'm not going to lay it so that I cut, you know, complete blocks at one time because if you notice, I've got two that are yellow and two that are striped. And also, I have to watch where my stripes go. This is just a software program. I couldn't get them to go straight. But my goal um, is to have the stripes going straight out this way and straight out that way. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you then how we lay it on the die. Here's the cross canoes. Uh, and it also makes a nine inch finished block. Keep in mind that if you're going to mix a die, a bob dies, you want to make sure that they both finish at the same size. And this also finishes at nine inches, as does the uh, starry path. Okay, so here's our die, our actual cutting die. Now, I'll walk you through some of these things. I like to mark my dies. I find it's a lot easier when I'm cutting fabric and pressing and doing all the, you know, doing all my rough cuts rather than going back and forth and reading the directions um, that um, sometimes to me I find hard to remember, you know, uh, where it tells you how to cut them in the different sizes and everything. Um, so I find it easier just to write all over my die and mark uh, what I want. So uh, under normal circumstances, if you were making a cross canoe, you would measure from here to here and you would get eight and a quarter inches and it would be an eight and a quarter inch square. And then you can just lay your fabric down, you know, eight and a quarter inches and um, fan folded. Obviously, I'm not going to use a stripe uh, and do it that way. But, you know, that would be the way. And you could lay two layers of, say, the blue and two layers of the white down. And then you would have enough to do one cross canoe block. However, our cross canoe block is going to look very different than that cross canoe block. So I can't just lay a layer of blue and a layer of stripes and a layer of teal down and have it come out this way. I have to individually cut the pieces. Okay, so the first thing I'm looking at is my stripes. Now I want my stripes to go this way and this way. So uh, when I cut it, this one, the stripes have to go this way. And when I cut this, the stripes have to go this way. So I'm going to cut the two center pieces in the stripe fabric at the same time because it will save me, and these will go this way, um, just because all the stripes are going to go the same way. So I've measured it at 8 inches. Now this is a mirror image of each other, uh, and it's 8 by 3 and a half inches. Uh, it's actually 3 and a half. Um, and so uh, I need to make it 3 and a half inches wide and 8 inches long, and I need to make sure the stripes are going in the proper direction, which is this way. So my stripe fabric, now this is a little bit short, but we're gonna pretend it's eight inches long from here to here. And I can at this point, if I want, I can fan fold as long as I fan fold it at three and a half inches and I can go back and forth as many times as I need. And in this particular uh, pattern, I need 16 of the top and 16 of the bottom. So I'll fan fold it till I get about 16 layers. I, on my iron, I'll press it down and then I'll sub cut it into six layer stacks. So I'm going to lay it here. I lay my die down. Now I'm going to be cut right here. I'm not going to have all this extra fabric. Put my uh, cutting mat over it, cut the pieces, and then I will end up with 
each cross I'm going to get six layers of this and I'm going to get six layers of that of this one so and as you see they're going in the same direction and when I do my pattern I'm going to want them to go out uh, all the time so that is the way I cut them so those are cut and I cut 16 of each and I'm going to put them aside so I have cut the 16 I need for here and here I still need to cut the dark blue and the teal and I need eight of each of those so I will again now in this case I don't need to cut the C because I don't need a blue or a teal here so I'm going to refer to what I wrote here because I said if I only want to do a B I need a six and a quarter by three and a half inch piece so I will go and get my teal fabric uh, and then my dark fabric and I will cut oblongs that are three and a half by six and a quarter and lay it right here okay and let's just pretend for a moment this is obviously and you would end up having a piece and kind of look like that when you lay it down you will get your V cuts so I will cut first eight to get the teal and then I will cut eight to get the blue all right so those are done so now I have cut these pieces these pieces and these and now I need the gold now according to my chart I need 16 of these remember we're making eight blocks so if I need two per block, that would make 16. That's how I come up with my numbers. If I need one of these per block, right, I need eight. And that's how I get the eight. And how I got the 16 is I need two per block. So I look at the picture and say, okay, how many do I need for each one? Then I multiply it by the number of blocks I need. All right, so uh, the only other thing I need to do is do the gold. And I've actually, if you see, I put a little mark here. It says C only, two and three quarter inch square. Now, the reason I put that is if I were to cut a smaller piece, I could cut it smaller, uh, but then I'd waste all this fabric. So if I cut it just a little bit larger, I can cut half of them this way. I need 16. I can make eight of these, eight layers. And I could cut eight this way, and when it cuts off, I'll take this fabric, flip it over, and I'll do eight on the other side. And it'll work perfectly. And so I'll actually save a lot of fabric. I won't waste any. So then, so there I have, I've made, oops, a little extra, um, eight of these. And actually, if you look, you can see they'll actually fit right on there. So with a two and three quarter inch piece, I can cut two pieces. And that's a good saver for fabric, all right? So now all we have to do is our background, which is the teal and the blue. Now there's two, there's the same shape, but it's called an A and an AR. And the reason they called it an A and an AR is because they're mirror images of each other. Well, truth be told, you can fan fold this and get an A and an AR, and you can fan fold this and get an A and an AR. But what I decided to do, um, and if you look, I have, if I'm cutting an A or an AR only, I have to cut a rectangle that's four inches by five and a quarter in order to cover this entire shape. So I have to be five and a quarter inches long and I have to be four inches across. However, these are mirror images of each other and I said to myself, well, what if I cut a larger rectangle and did the same thing and I cut them then I went and took the pieces here, and then I could use the other side. I said it would save fabric. Now, I do have to make it a little wider, but if you're making one piece and you lose this extra here, you cut four by five and a quarter. But if you want to do this flip method that I just said, I need a four and a half by five and a quarter inch piece. So by adding a half an inch to the width, nothing else changes I get twice as many cuts so this is just a great tip so anyway I did that and I cut my A's and then I took my other piece of fabric which was sitting here and I moved it over and flipped it and I cut the other side and actually since they're fan folded I'm actually getting half A's and AR's each time I cut because they're flipped if that makes sense and anyway I needed um, 16A and 16AR of the teal 
and I needed 16A and 16AR of the blue, and simply by uh, opening them up, oh, these ones didn't cut all the way. Yeah, let me get one here. And simply by taking this one, oh, look at that. And this one, I have the two, oh, there we go. I have the two different versions that I need in order to do the block. So I do have them automatically cut um, each way. So that is basically uh, how I cut it. I did have to cut them individually. It wasn't just one pass of the die, but you know, you get patterns that are really unique and different and I really like it. So now that we've got all these pieces cut, we're going to go and sew them together. Um, since this is kind of a tricky pattern uh, and I have a couple different variations, uh, you know, in the way the pieces have to be sewn together, um, the first thing I like to do is look at the directions on the back of the packaging to see uh, what is the first step. And it says, sew piece B to piece C. So I'm looking at here, and I know by seeing this B and C are my two center pieces. So let's get my center pieces out. So I have some striped center pieces and some gold center pieces. Then I have on the points, so those are my C's. I have two different color C's. And on the B's, I actually have three colors. I have stripes, I have dark blue, and I have teal. So I have to figure out what I sew to what. Uh, now what I notice immediately is the two gold are touching the stripes, not anything else. So now I know the gold goes with the stripes. So I'm gonna sew those together, okay? And then I'm going to look and say, all right, the blue goes with the stripe, and the teal goes with the stripe. So I could actually string piece those together and sew that to that. So that's going to be my plan. So my first step, according to the directions, is sew C to B. So I have my C to B packages, and I could go ahead now and sew those sections together. Okay, so I have my B and C units, and I'm going to do the gold and the stripes first. Okay, and I just like to put the long ones on this side and the short ones on that side. Now I haven't flipped these, so these are right side up, wrong side up, they're back and forth. So I'm just gonna go as I sew and I'm gonna correct them. Um, so I'm gonna take, I'm actually gonna put them to the side. Um, I like to leave them here, because otherwise I end up pushing them off the table as I'm sewing. So I'm gonna take one, and all you really have to do is line them up, just like this. All right, you're laying this on top of the other piece right sides together, and then you sew. And again, I like to lift my presser foot up, put it down so the first stitch is in my fabric. I find it doesn't eat my fabric as quickly um, or as often, so I'm gonna sew. Now I will go ahead and sew all of these, and as we talked about, I have 16 of them because I need two for every block. And since I'm making eight blocks, I need 16. Now, I will be publishing a pattern for this, which will give you all the exact measurements. I mean, you can probably, I think I've mentioned all of it on the video, so if you replay it, um, you can get the information. Um, but if you do like a written pattern, um, you're welcome to purchase one on my Etsy site. It's Fontana Originals. Uh, just like my name and originals. Um, it's not there yet. I first like to make these and do the videos. That's kind of going to be my order, is to make it, do the video, and then write the pattern. So that'll be coming. So, But if not, you can still catch all the information from the video. So uh, never fear. it. You can always do it without um, the pattern. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish these. I'm going to do the 16. Oh, flip that one over. Make sure they're always right sides together. Okay, well, I'll finish these and I'll go on to the other two colors. Uh, now I'm going to do the blue and the teal. Uh, so I should have eight of each and I'm just going to check and count them. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, I have eight of these, so 16, and I have 16 stripes. So I can just sew them in uh, string fashion as well, since they're all getting sewn to the same uh, striped little piece. So 
off I go again. And again, I like to put my uh, presser foot down on my fabric to start. And I'll just go ahead and just make sure they're always right sides together. You know, check before you sew. <laughs> Word to the wise, I've sewn things and ripped them out more times than I think I've been successful. <laughs> oh, there's a little one that's stuck. I always keep scissors. Um, scissors are my second most used tool. Do you know what my first most used tool is? <laughs> my seam ripper, yes. I actually was quilting something on my long arm. It was a Snails, Trails, Storm at Sea combo, which you haven't seen yet because I got about a third of the way done. Absolutely hated the quilting. Pulled it off the long arm machine and I spent three days picking out the stitches with a seam ripper. So I have seam rippers everywhere. The worst thing that could ever happen to me is I'm home alone at night and I lost all my seam rippers. I mean, I just wouldn't be able to continue because I do constantly make mistakes. Uh, and I think I just don't pay attention. I listen to the music. I think I'm brilliant. And then I'm just going to do everything correct. And that's exactly when I go wrong. Uh, so anyway, so I'm going to continue sewing these um, teal and then I'm going to sew the blue. 16 in total. All right, so I'm going to put together the last part of the cross canoes block. And as you remember, we sewed together um, all of the pieces for the center. Um, so we sewed uh, two for each of the blocks, which was 16 striped, uh, eight in the teal, and eight in the dark blue. So now we have to match them up with the appropriate um, backgrounds. So the first thing I want to do is look in and notice that the teal only has a dark background and the dark only has a teal background. So those are the first ones I'm going to put together. So I'm taking my eight teal pieces and I've matched them up with eight of the dark backgrounds, uh, eight going in the left and eight going in the right. Um, then I went to the dark um, pieces and I matched them up with the teal background, uh, eight on the left and eight on the right. Um, the next is going to be the stripes, and they all have the gold. Now, if you've noticed, this one has a blue on the right and a teal on the left. Now, it may look the same, but it's not. When you go here, it's exactly opposite. There's teal on the right and blue on the left. Okay, so they're opposite. So I need eight with a dark blue on the left and eight with a dark blue on the right. So that's the way I'm going to lay them out. So here I am, there's eight with the dark blue on the right, and there's eight with the dark blue on the left, and then I just add the teal. So I actually have four different sew combinations I have to do. Um, and I'm actually gonna use one for each of the eight blocks. Uh, now to make it easy, I'm gonna chain piece them. Um, and what I normally will do is I will stack them. So I'm going to go like this. Because I'm going to sew all up one side and then sew all down the other side. And if I do them this way, if I have four and there's eight, so I have 32, I can do 32 in a row instead of stopping and starting. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these together now like this. And I'm going to start with one side and the center and do them all. And then I'm going to go up on the other side and do I'm the other. I'm going to start sewing um, the uh, left panels uh, to the center pieces. Um, and as again, you know, I like to finger press. So I'm going to take my piece. And in this case, I've just decided to finger press uh, to the larger size, uh, to the end, uh, to the middle. So I'm going to press the um, small piece down just because I thought it would reduce bulk here if I'm trying to sew. So the first thing I need to do is turn it over so it's right sides together. And I'm going to match up the corner, if you can see this. Um, this is the back, the way it looks. And this is the front, the way we're matching it. Uh, because the pieces have to open. When it's done, it's going to lay like this. 
to make the corner. So it does have to turn and you will be sewing right across that seam as you start. So I just, it's easier for me to lay it down and match the shapes together. They match together perfectly right here at the corner. And you actually be starting um, right here. Again, I like to lift up my foot and put it on the fabric. And I'm going to make sure that my other side is straight, and it is, and I will sew. Oh, let me set this up a little bit farther, okay. And I'm actually going to take this one off uh, because I found just because I think it's right, it isn't always right. And so I like to go ahead and check to make sure it's fitting properly. And I will compare it to the picture. And that is the way I do want it to look. So I am good to go. It's exactly the way the picture looks. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I like to, oh, actually my needle thread came out. So let's just put that back in. Aren't needle threaders wonderful if you don't have one on your machine? If you're ever in the market, I would make sure that is a feature you get the next time you buy a machine. So anyway, just to keep them together, I'm going to just kind of sew the end of this a little bit. Because this way I get all my pieces together and I won't mix up my color order. So uh, finger press down, take the next piece, set it, match it. Just like that. Now I can feed it because my foot is already on the previous fabric, so it gives a little lift. Now it's very important at this stage that you do not disturb the, the order in which your fabric is stacked because if you do, you will be sewing the pieces wrong and you will be ripping them out. All right, so, so I'm gonna go work my way through these. And I have 32 in total uh, that I am uh, sewing together because I did stack them. Once I laid them out and I stacked them in order. So I'm just gonna go through one at a time, continue matching them up, feeding it in, making sure the bottom is straight and the seams are lined up. Okay, so that was three or four, got 28 to go. Pieces are sewn. I put them all here, and let me just show you one. Um, this is the way we've sewn it: the two halves together, just like this. Now I'm, you know, I did the center piece and the um, left side. Now I'm going to do the right side. Now I know on the teal, and I've restacked them very carefully to make sure I put them all in the correct color combination order. Um, so I'm going to do them one at a time, and I am going to just continue to finger press. So I'm going to take my opposite side and I'm going to lay them here in the correct order and I'm going to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn it over uh, because I want to sew from the other direction I think this time. I'm going to sew from the corner. So I need to make sure, I like to lay my pieces down to make sure they fit. Actually I think I'm going to start from the top. But what I will do now is I'm going to finger press down at the corner here because these pieces will sew together at this point and I want to make sure it's flat. So I'm just running my finger along that edge and uh, I'm actually, I think I'm going to press it out because when I get to that point I don't want a lot of bulk in the way because otherwise I'm not going to get a crisp point. So in this case I am finger pressing to the blue and then I'm going to take my neck, my opposite side, it's going to lay like that, turn it over, lay it down, and it's actually the exact same sewing I just did on the other side. So I'm going to get it started and then make sure my point matches up. And again, I want to test it to make sure I've done it correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up just for this one. Let me finger press it down, and there is the one quarter of the block. 
Okay, so those are the teal, and they have the dark background, as we talked about. Um, so I'm going to continue. I'm going to take the next one. I'm going to um, fold the blue over, finger press it down, take the next piece, turn it over, set it right, align it up, put it under the presser foot, start sewing. I want to make sure my points are even down the other side. Okay, let's do it again. The blue is on the top, fold it over so I'm pressing to the blue. Give it a good finger press. Obviously it's more of a nail press than a finger press because I am using my nail. And I'll just lay it right down. And the thing that's nice, I don't know if you can see this, but the piece is laid together perfectly right here. Can you see that? And if I flip it over, they just match up. You can't even see the edge from here because this is where I'm, I'm sewing it into this corner. See? And that's where I'm starting and I'm going to sew down this side. So let me just set it there. Start it. Make sure my end is lined up and keep it in place. Okay, I have a few more to sew. I think I have four left, so I thought I'd just kind of let you watch me piece them to see kind of the process without me really saying anything. I'll see if I'll try not to. This makes 32. So I've done eight of each. Um, there's four different ones. And uh, next I will uh, put the blocks together. Well, I thought they sewed up rather quickly. So now I'm going to go and cut them apart and uh, we're going to put the uh, four pieces together and make our block. Here are the four quadrants. I have eight of each and here's my picture and so now all I have to do is position them correctly and I can sew them together. So let's do that now. Um, so this is the dark with the blue. So that goes in the upper right and in the upper left is a striped with the blue on top. So that's this one. So that's the striped with the blue on top. And then this is the blue with the teal. All right, so that's this group. And this, if I did it right, has the blue on the right. Voila! So now all I have to do is sew them together. Okay, so uh, just before I sew, um, I want to point out something to you. Uh, I've been finger pressing all this time, um, and one of the reasons I do that is because when I get to this point, I then can really tell which way my seams need to go to sew the blocks, the pieces, the units together so they nest and I get those really good sharp seams. And the key is having the seams go in opposite direction. So um, if I look at these two pieces, if you recall, I finger pressed everything out. So both of these seams are pressed out or finger pressed out. And there's going to be like six layers of fabric here and two on this side. And it's going to be very bulky on one side, not on the other. So what I really want to do is turn this one seam going in the opposite direction now. And this is when I'm going to take it to the iron. Because if I take every... A quadrant that I have and press 
the right side in so that they're both going in this direction. As I fit them in around, they'll nest together. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go and uh, press my blocks um, and I'll show you what they look like when I'm done. I just wanted to show you the seams. I've now actually pressed these. This is the first time I've pressed the block or the unit. So uh, what I did is I pressed both seams going in the same direction. Everything is going in the same direction, okay? Actually, let me turn it towards me. So they're going to the left. So the one that I had finger pressed, I left, and then the second one, I just steamed with the iron and I went and I held it down and I pressed them. And every single one is done the same way, okay? So they're all going that way. And that's going to allow them to nest together when I sew them. So let me just show you now, because I'm going to sew these two seams together. So now um, one seam goes this way, and one seam goes that way, and I can push them together, and they're going to kiss. And that's what I'm going to match up my two pieces so that they will uh, look perfect from the other I'm side. Lower two units, and I'm going to sew them together like this. And uh, I put one on my machine here and one on my machine here. Uh, and actually, uh, I'm going to leave them like that because when I start turning things around, I start getting confused, and that's where I make mistakes. Okay, so let me take one, and I'm going to turn it over. And I'm waiting for my machine to turn on because I forgot to put it on. So, but actually, in the meantime, I'm going to line this up. There we go. There's my light. So, I have it matched up here, and I want to make sure that seam goes. I'm going to set this down once I know the direction I'm going, and I'm going to make sure this one matches over here. Now, it may be a little bit off. The points may not match exactly, but as long as I catch any unevenness in my quarter-inch seam allowance, it's perfectly fine. So I'm going to just go slow here. I want to make sure... I'm catching where my points are, just like that. Because the goal is to sew it right on point there. And I'm just gonna check. I always like to check the first one to make sure. And uh, let's see. Yeah, it's a little bit close. I think when I press it out, it's going to look better. Um, but it's okay. I mean, I think I can live with it. I mean, obviously, it looks a little stretchy right now. But um, let's... Uh, and, you know, also, when you're using the gold here and the stripe there, it kind of throws you off because it looks wonky, uh, even though it may not be. So, anyway, I think I'm okay with that. I'm going to go ahead and um, just want to attach that because I like to keep them together. And I'm going to take the next bottom one and lay it here uh, on the left. And then this is the right. And I'm going to match them up again so that the seams kiss on both sides. Even if I have to give it a little tug, it's okay. And then I'm going to sew down the other side. to the next one and I'll take this piece and toss it put it over my seams up again on both sides okay and I'm going to continue sewing these together and uh, and um, when I start the next, I will show you. But it's just as simple as laying them down, making sure the two sides match up. You know, I'm actually trying to line up the seams here and the seams here um, because then I know they're going to fit perfectly together. Okay, so here I go. This one looks good. And if I'm not sure, it's okay to pick it up and look a little for a minute. You know, no harm. I 
I now have the second set, which would be the top half, and these two pieces will get sewn together this way. Um, and so I'm going to just repeat the process. Let me just set those aside. I'll lay one down, turn one over. Now the sewing will be a little bit different just because I'm sewing, um, I mean I could turn them upside down and backwards and they would be sewn together the same way, but I find this makes me more alert as to <laughs> what I'm doing. I easily get, you know, will start sewing things wrong if I don't pay attention. Um, so I'm just going to line this up. And it's a, it's a little bit wonky on that side, which means I probably didn't sew it perfectly together. Shockeroo. Um, but that's okay. I can, I'm just going to worry. It's not too far off. Still put my needle down. Sew to there. Because I'm actually matching up my seams up here. I'm worried about this matching and this and this. So if it's a little off at the uh, where the uh, seam sews, it's okay because no one's ever going to see it. All right, so let me get a second one. So see if I'm laying it this, I'm starting to sew from this side this time instead of um, this side, which is what we did before, just because that was the bottom, this is the top. So visually it helps me remember. Uh, so I'm going to turn one over, snug the seams together here and on the other side. Make sure the middle is lined up. And that looks okay. I'm good there. I think I'm there. Oh, that's pretty good. So get there right at that point. Make sure this is still good. Okay. And six more to go. And then all we have to do is sew the two halves together. And I am not going to press uh, until I have the two sewn together. Uh, because I'm not sure uh, which way the seams need to go at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew these, and then I'm going to finger press uh, when I do the next. The two halves are sewn together, and just one last final check. I'm going to look at my picture and say, okay, the four light teal are going on this side, and the four darker on this side. My colors are opposite. I'm great. Now, I'm as I said, the only time I pressed it is when I uh, did these seams over here. I'm not going to press it now because I'm just going to fold these over. I'm going to take them to the machine, and I'm just going to push the seams in opposite directions. And then once these are all sewn together, I'll give it a final press because I'm going to swirl the corners here to flatten the uh, middle seams as well, which I'll show you. Okay. So I have my two halves. And now that it's pretty much, shouldn't say this, I'll probably jinx myself, mistake proof. Uh, I put these upside down and right side up so that I can just quickly sew them together. Uh, now I will set these others just off the table because when I start to sew, obviously they'd all fall off. So I'm just going to set them there and take the first one and on this I'm going to take this one and as I said I'm just going to nest the seams so I always like to put the seam at the top facing away from me because this one naturally will want to slide under when you're sewing so uh, here I go I'm going to make sure that's facing down and away and I'm going to match this up as well so it's kind of a little bit of a contortion and I'm going to let this seam down here because these are in opposite directions. They'll actually kiss. So I can line it up all the way down the block uh, because this will sew wherever it is. I don't care if this is not a perfect point as long as my seams are matching up because I sew seam to seam, not you know end to end because people always look at your points. Um, so here we go. Make sure I cross that one. Now I'm going to realign these. Make sure one's facing one way, one is facing the other, which it is. And I want to get those seams right spot on together. So I will hold this and stop in the middle. And then I'm going to realign this side up and sew to that point. And then I will allow the piece here to match up. Because as I said, we've, you know, fanned these kind of, so this will actually match perfectly as well. 
which will give you the guidance to sew the rest together. So that's our block. It's our finished block. Let's see if we can't see it. It's just the same sewing for all the rest of them, and there we are. And it's just a matter of which way you face it. Um, but the stripes are going the way I want. The pieces are going where I want. And I'm going to sew the remaining seven together. And uh, then all we have to do is uh, put the pieces together, lay them out, and sew, and we're done. So I sewed the pieces together. So these are the four pieces. Um, I am on the ironing board right now because I want to show you um, how I'm going to press it. Now, I, as I said, I put the seams in opposite directions, but I haven't really uh, finger pressed it or anything since I sewn it together. The first thing I want to do is take my seam ripper and I'm going to pick out the couple of stitches that are above the seam line. So those couple of stitches, I'm going to pick those out. And I'm going to pick them out on each side. So let me do this side first. And I'm just kind of careful. I just pick at them and make sure you don't pull anything other than those just those stitches. But I'm going to do both sides just to make sure. And then I'm going to kind of just check to see if those seams are released. And it is, okay? Don't go beyond that seam line, okay? So anyway, so now I'm going to lay it down. And this is actually how you swirl your seams. And if you kind of just separate it a little, they will naturally fall in a certain direction. And there you go. If you look, it made a little square right in the middle. Can you see that? Look. Yeah. It's a little square right in the middle. And so each of the seams naturally goes in this direction. So that's how I'm going to press it. So I'm going to come in. I don't want to pull too much because sometimes, you know, with all the different sewing, it gets a little wonky. So I just want to get that middle piece down. And then I know I can sew around. So, and I'll fix those wrinkles later. So I'm just going to kind of give it a little tug this way and pull that seam that way. And steam is your friend. Okay, so there you go. And I give it a little tug. You notice I'm pulling here. And I'm trying to make sure that the seams, wherever I had them originally, I'm not, you know, pressing them in a different direction. So there you go. Just give this a little pull. And we'll turn it again. I just kind of like to do it this way. I tend to work better in one direction than another, so um, I just go with it. Okay, so this one is a little, let's just give this a little tug here. And come down. And we'll give this one a little tug. And yeah, the, the proof usually is when you turn it around, you know, and if it gets a little wrinkled, you could just kind of give it a nice little straight here. Because that's really where you can, for lack of a better word, almost like block the quilt. You know, block the block. Does that sound silly? You're going to block the block? So, but anyway, so I'm going to go around and stretch it as I go. Because when you do a lot of sewing in the seams here, it's harder sometimes for it to be even because there's so many more seams and ways for it to pull in the wrong direction. So let's just do that. And there we go. I think that's pretty good. And what's really nice uh, about the whole thing is that when you turn it over, you do have that little swirly seam, and then they all are going in a different direction. And there's no bulk here at all. Okay, it's flat, and so you're not going to break needles when you try and quilt it or anything like that. Or if you send it out for quilting, um, they're not going to say bad things about it. <laughs> That's a joke, of course. You know, nobody likes to sew through big, heavy seams. And so I think your quilt will really appreciate it if you take that extra care. So that is our um, cross canoes that is now going to be paired uh, with the um, our other block. And so let me show you how we put those together. Okay, so there it is. It's the starry path and the cross canoes. Uh, and it, it's kind of silly because I have it hanging on the wall, but the stripes are there. I'll bring it closer in a minute. Uh, but what really you can see are those little yellow pieces that really jump out at you. And sometimes it looks different 
on a piece of paper than it does when you've actually finished the quilt. So this actually looks cooler than I thought it would uh, because what I'm noticing is these pieces here, you see these diamond points? I didn't notice those when I had it on the paper, but now I do, and I think it looks entirely different. So, But actually, uh, it's just the quilt top. I have not put a, a quilt sandwich together yet, uh, so I haven't quilted it um, or put the binding on, but I am planning to put a light blue binding on, the, the teal binding, actually, that I've been using throughout, uh, because when I looked at the paper, I like that one better. So um, that is my starry path and my cross canoes, uh, and don't forget, they both finish at nine inches, and that is the key. If you're going to put two bob dies together, make sure they finish at the same size, or that there are multiples, so if one fi finishes at a six, and one at a 12, you could use that because you could do two sixes and, and happy quilting. quilting.